Today we'll talk about fabric. Uh, I want to thank you both of you. Uh, first, um, Casey Wan, Dr. Wan has been a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Clemson University since 2004. His research interests include future networking and computer architecture, software defined infrastructure, and artificial intelligence. From 2012 to 15, Casey was a visiting professor with Stanford University, the Open Networking Lab, and Big Switch Networks. From 2015 to 17, he was Clemson Networking Chief Technology Officer. Casey, thank you very much for being here. Well, thank you very much, Jorge. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, yes, uh, I can hear you very great. well. And I will introduce um, Paul also, and then I absolutely. will let you share. Um, thank you, Paul, for being here. Uh, Paul Ruth is an Assistant Director, Network Research and Infrastructure at the Renzi Institute at the University of South Carolina. He has been a member of Renzi Networking North Carolina. Research, <laughs> North Carolina, I apologize. <laughs> Um, during, during his time, he has contributed to several large computing, computer networking and cloud testbed, including Gini, Chameleon, and Fabric. He received his PhD in computer science from Purdue University in 2007. He currently leads the advanced networking efforts for Chameleon and is a member of the leadership team of Fabric. I should mention also that Dr. Juan is a member of the leadership team of Fabric. So thank you both, uh, and I will let you uh, continue with the presentation. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jorge. Um, today, I'm, I'm very happy to come here and see many friends, familiar names in the crowd, and also uh, many new people. Uh, we're always happy to share what we're working on uh, with the Fabric Testbed. We hope this will be uh, really a community resource. Uh, and I'm really excited to hear Jorge talk about all the P4 development that has been going on in the community. Um, we're actually building up Fabric right now, and then all the elements that you have mentioned, uh, the tutorials, uh, will be great materials um, to, uh, to work together uh, to make it easier for researchers to conduct P4 research. Um, so. Some of you may have already uh, heard and known about Fabric for some time. Uh, Fabric is an NSF project. Um, it started 2019. It's a mid-scale research infrastructure. Uh, it's meant to build a nation, uh, national scope uh, testbed for future internet research. Um, it's designed to be highly programmable and particularly emphasizing uh, from the edge into the core uh, programmable elements throughout the network. Uh, so this is led by a multi-university uh, team. Uh, so uh, other than Clemson, uh, you have already heard, um, Renzi at UNC Chapel Hill, uh, Ilya Boding is the PI for the project. Um, and then we have University of Kentucky, uh, ESNet, uh, and uh, you, um, uh, so Indiana, uh, no, uh, Illinois, uh, UIUC, uh, we're working together on this. But then these are just the core members who drive this day to day. Uh, but Fabric is really uh, collected, uh, made possible by dozens of uh, facility partners, university partners, science researchers all together. So as we introduce this, you'll see um, the many different elements that goes into Fabric's um, design and implementation. So uh, why do we uh, build Fabric today and as it is? Uh, so as in the past uh, more than 10 years, actually, if I think about the NSF Genie project, GENI, Global Environment for Network Innovations, I believe many uh, um, uh, friends today in attendance will be very familiar with Genie. So Genie has been a national uh, future internet testbed as well. Uh, it has been uh, very successful, uh, having large number of uh, researchers leveraging that, students learning that in the classroom. Um, one important element is that it is uh, highly pervasive. Uh, it's a very big distributed cloud uh, system that people can go in, reserve many entities uh, at all, many locations, and that they're all connected through internet too, and uh, the national and regional networks. 
So we can do a lot of experiments there, but one of the limitation is the computing capabilities of the genie elements are limited. Uh, and that was influenced by uh, 15 years ago, the technology, the economics available at that time, that's what we can do the best. Uh, but nowadays, because of the change in the um, uh, economics for these elements, now we can have very large compute and storage capabilities uh, input into uh, compute servers. So what we're looking for uh, as a transformative opportunity is if we can rebuild the whole internet with these uh, very resource rich elements, would we build it differently? Can we build a much more stateful internet where much more information is known and processed throughout the network to decide how the network should operate. So you can see that we incorporated uh, at every node within the fabric network. Uh, it'll have these uh, computing elements like um, graphical processing units, GPUs, FPGAs. Uh, we're going to have lots of memory and lots of uh, CPU uh, capacity uh, at every node. The network is also a very high capacity from 100 gigabit to one terabit per second. And I'm gonna show you the national topology in a minute. So one of the important reason for Fabric is uh, NSF sees the importance of supporting multiple um, research uh, topics that has been uh, catching national attention. Uh, so we really have a multi-dimension um, mission uh, at hand. We have to not just build a network test bed, but we at the same time uh, are expected to really collaborate with research communities in uh, different topic areas. Uh, I listed some of those here, uh, the very important high level uh, breakdowns. We have machine learning and AI researchers. They're really looking into how the network can become a big data instrument. Um, so uh, how can you really uh, gather lots of network information and measurement in real time and use that to run uh, network control algorithms or use that to optimize the network um, uh, traffic going over that? And this is not alone in academics. Uh, this is already happening in the industry. We can bring up many examples of uh, the industry trying to talk about how network will become um, really autonomous self-driving going into the future. Uh, the second area we uh, identify here, uh, 5G IoT, that is really looking at an edge uh, for the internet that is changing. So much higher amount of traffic expected generated um, uh, in a mobile fashion. Uh, and how can we make the edge much more um, aware of the traffic that is going on over that. Uh, science applications uh, in all different topic areas. Uh, and uh, we really uh, make an effort to connect to all the existing NSF uh, computing uh, facilities across the country. Uh, so from supercomputing centers to campus uh, computing uh, centers, and then uh, for all the NSF test beds um, uh, that have both networking, uh, wireless, uh, cloud. Uh, these are all elements that we're bringing them together. So really, we are thinking about the network as a computing continuum. Um, so as we link all these different elements here, you can see in every part of the network, uh, computing really uh, is um, a, a major component that, uh, that is uh, being done, but in, at different scales and different form factors. With the, um, the fabric system, we expect to engage as we uh, always think about all the different communities. How can we support different needs uh, with the same infrastructure, which at the same time really push for uh, the boundary of performance. It's really high capacity, uh, high throughput, but we also wanted the programmability that go down to the very low level of uh, uh, visibility. So Fabric as a national programmable network, uh, what we really wanted to um, the community to see that is uh, it connects a lot of the elements that uh, researchers may need 
to build um, interesting uh, research topologies. So you can have existing uh, production grade computing facilities. You can have uh, programmable network elements, uh, whether it's the smart NICs, the network interface, or whether it's GPU and FPGAs. Um, and we wanted uh, it to be very easily composable. So we really go out of our um, uh, all the efforts to, to try to make it very simple. We see them as a lot of computing uh, elements that we can connect them, uh, just like connecting PCI devices. So it becomes very easy to drag and drop uh, all the, uh, only the, the resources that you care and put it into an experiment. So this is a topology that uh, you can briefly see uh, across 29 locations within uh, United States. This is all on the Department of Energy uh, or ESnet uh, version six uh, footprint. So all the, the yellow lines show the terabit per second uh, super core, that's how we call it. Um, they'll have the, the very high bandwidth uh, capabilities, but all the blue lines are the 100 gigabit connections. And these are all uh, DWDM optical links that is uh, we're directly building our fabric nodes on top of this optical uh, substrate. Uh, important point we want to emphasize is uh, this research network inter directly interface with the uh, public internet. So we work with internet too uh, to pair with uh, the public internet, uh, both on the east and the west uh, of United States. We also go through those uh, pairing points to connect to the commercial cloud operator. So we have Google Cloud, Amazon, Azure, they're all uh, going to be connected to uh, Fabric. So that means you can set up a Fabric experiment topology to interface with the computing uh, entities that you already have on these uh, cloud platforms. Uh, so I wanna mention Fab and I see several of the Fab partners uh, in attendance today. Uh, so FAB stands for Fabric Across Borders. Uh, this is an NSF IRNC, International Research Network Project. Uh, it brings the fabric footprint beyond United States. Uh, so we work with partners in Japan, uh, in Europe, which includes um, in UK, uh, Bristol, and then we uh, have uh, our European partners, Amsterdam, CERN, and also um, we have South America with Brazil. I see Alex here today, I believe. And um, so we are connecting uh, through Miami to Brazil. Um, so these are all the partners that we have a specific science focus uh, that is leveraging this international extension of fabric. Uh, so you can see it from astronomy uh, to high energy physics, uh, to urban smart city IoT research, to 5G, uh, to P4, uh, cybersecurity. Uh, so these are topics that we are uh, helping researchers as uh, the first use cases uh, to bring them up on Fabric. So here you can see a rough uh, uh, illustration of what a typical Fabric site looks like. So every Fabric site contains multiple worker nodes and we have um, these nodes, these servers connected to a network switch that will go on to our 100 gig or terabit um, uh, optical connection. So from a programmable networking perspective, uh, we have uh, different options. We have the, the P4 switches, uh, I, um, Tofino was mentioned, we are working with Intel um, uh, to, to have some of these uh, switches available within Fabric. We're also looking at the FPGA side uh, so where uh, Paul may talk a little bit more about that, we can implement P4 uh, by uh, an FPGA implementation, which makes it much more sliceable uh, for supporting multiple experiments. Uh, and of course, because of uh, the really powerful nodes, we can run the software P4 switches uh, pretty effectively as well. So there, it, it gives the researcher multiple options. And every node, by the way, we call it a hank. Um, basically, uh, it's the unit um, of textile. Uh, since this is uh, the fabric test bed, we have these hank nodes uh, that uh, are deployed at different locations um, as our basic unit. So uh, the fabric node, uh, we have 
these servers, uh, the Dell servers, uh, these are AMD with uh, very big RAM, GPUs, FPGAs, uh, very big storage. Uh, every site have uh, substantial storage, but at the same time, we also have uh, two major locations with, with uh, much bigger storage. So uh, to researchers, really what it matters is you can design experiments to have lots of measurement. Those measurements will be easily stored within the fabric system. And then once you complete your experiment, you can export uh, those measurements for your research purpose. Um, we have the smart NICs in addition to uh, the P4 switches. The smart NICs is the Connect X5 and 6. Uh, you can emulate SDN, uh, software defined network, uh, using those NICs uh, very easily uh, with your own controller. And then uh, for, uh, we also have DPDK. Uh, we're going to uh, run that on the fabric nodes for increased performance. So uh, one emphasized uh, point for Fabric is the measurement support. Um, so we have uh, a measurement substrate. It has its own uh, measurement network uh, that uh, is going to transfer uh, all, the, all the data that you're measuring. And then there's a, a wide range of measurement that a researcher may want to use. Uh, some of the examples here is we have GPS uh, discipline clock at every node. So that means you have very, very precise time stamping capable. And then uh, those uh, will go into all the packet traces that you collect uh, in your experiment. You ha can have port mirroring. You can measure the power uh, under in the compute servers. Uh, the optical layer have some uh, limited measurements uh, available as well. Uh, so um, the building blocks for fabric. Uh, for those familiar with uh, a network test bed like Genie before, you will be familiar with the term slice. Uh, a slice is basically a collection of uh, different network and compute resources that, that can be tied together into a network topology. Uh, so we use slice as a unit, and then within slice, every uh, resource that you include is called a sliver. Um, and one of the important design feature for Fabric is uh, we expect experiments to evolve over time. So once you create a slice with some topology later on, you may want to add new nodes, uh, new network elements, or you want to expand it. You can add that and you can change. You can remove things from the past. So uh, that is a very important change from uh, what Genie can do in the past. Um, and then the Underlying connections, uh, we expect most researchers wanted these uh, layer two connections uh, between every node. Uh, we use MPLS to achieve that. And, and that is uh, permanently configured uh, using IPv6 uh, on Fabric. So there's a sta stability benefit there to have these MPLS layer two as the element uh, to comp compose the topology. Uh, you can have uh, with and without quality of service support. Uh, both are possible uh, within Fabric. Um, so now I will talk about some topologies. Uh, we expect uh, many experiments may want to have these bump, bumping the wire configuration. So you can see under uh, this graph uh, where you have layer two connections going in uh, to one of the network interface and it comes out what behind uh, the NIC is actually connected to a PCI interface that go to the storage. That means uh, packet logging. So you have the packet trace very quickly captured, stored, uh, and then the GPU connected there uh, can immediately process those for machine learning type of problems. Uh, you also have the GPS uh, connected to those elements so that you can do the timestamp very quickly. So now uh, if I swap that to be FPGAs, I think about these uh, FPGAs can be just emulating an ethernet switch, or it can be a P4 switch. Um, coming in, uh, you have uh, uh, these connections, uh, again, going to the PCI and can be logged in different ways. Uh, and multiple FPGAs can be uh, streamed together uh, to become a larger switch, or it can be um, uh, a pipeline that you compose. Uh, one of the things that we work, spend a lot of time working on is to make it easy for you to uh, have your own FPGA uh, binaries uh, running on these code. 
Um, so we worked out a solution. Um, so at the fabric site will have um, the ability to run the uh, FPGA runtime, while individual researchers, you can have your own license to compile those binaries and load it onto the FPGAs. Um, so this, this is an uh, additional slide talking more about the, how the storage is uh, arranged. It's, it's really a tiered architecture with different levels of storage, all the way from the spinning disk um, to the, uh, the solid state drives, SSDs. Um, so uh, after this, um, uh, the, for the AIML, uh, what I mentioned, want to mention is the, the ability of the GPUs. Uh, so again, is connected as through PCI interfaces. So there's a lot of uh, different uh, processes you can run on that. And external facilities. Now, this is one emphasis that we have it from day one of the design. We want to make sure that external facilities can be uh, connected either as a layer two network connected resource or through a layer three network. Um, and, and this includes uh, all the supercomputing centers, uh, or it can be um, the, the cloud test beds. Uh, with our international partners, uh, we connect to their fabric nodes or their campus resources uh, this way. So pretty quickly, we're going to talk about, um, uh, okay, so this is the public cloud. Um, so we, we have a topology with Internet2. Uh, to get this happen. I, I think a lot of details, we will be uh, sharing that with the community as we turn these on. So today's focus is on P4. Uh, let's see, uh, here, uh, this is the, the individual researcher's laptop. It's just like any other external facility we can connect that. Um, but I wanna quickly go to uh, the P4 part. Um, this is an indication of the measure measurement uh, concept, how we do that. Uh, there's uh, different uh, sort of software that uh, people may be familiar with, Elasticsearch, Kibana. Uh, these are all the um, provisioned in the Fabric uh, services, whether the Fabric system itself and the <coughs> Fabric experimenters uh, can all use this. Okay, so so from P4, this, this point on, I think uh, I'll hand it to uh, Paul. Uh, to talk about that uh, there's really multiple different ways that we can compose this and Paul will walk through a few of the experience uh, examples that we have already been working on. Oh, you want to unshare and I can share? Sure, I think yep. you can do that now. Uh, so this one, this one, share, boom. All right, so everyone can see this I assume. All right, so uh, as Casey uh, said, you know, my name is Paul Ruth and I'm at RENC, UNC Chapel Hill. And uh, my, one of my major roles um, with the Fabric testbed is to kind of collect, uh, to, to sort of manage the users and collect the users' requirements and try to figure out how to get that running on Fabric and vice versa, teach the users how to use the various um, um, capabilities that Fabric has. And um, for this particular audience, um, I'm going to talk about the, the P4 work that we've been doing, trying to set it up and get P4 started on Fabric. So as Casey mentioned, um, the, so the main purpose of Fabric is to allow you, the user, to control things in the core of the network um, at scale with high performance links and, and, and compute and so forth. And an example experiment looks like this. Um, you might have um, various different types of resources and nodes that you want to have in various places throughout Fabric, and you can connect them together with, with, with these high-speed links. Um, what's interesting here is you can compose things together. So there's, there's um, some external resources and FPGAs and GPUs and SSDs and so forth, um, along with P4, um, switches all the same thing. Um, for the purposes of this talk, we're going to really focus mostly on the P4 parts, but keep in mind that all these other stuff is available, as well as you can compose um, uh, these slices with P4 switches along with other things. So you can think of doing interesting things where you have maybe a P4 switch, but then you have a GPU doing some AI that's controlling the, the program, uh, how you're programming the P4 switch and all in the same spot in this core of the network. So keep that in mind when, you're, when I'm talking about this, that I'm going to focus on P4, but there's really more to it as well. Um, so Casey showed you this slide as well. This is, this is the picture of our 29 sites that were funded to build in the United States. 
Um, of course, you mentioned that there's some outside of the United States that we're also funded to build. Um, what you're going to be able to do with these sites is um, request resources at any of the sites or all of the sites for that matter and then connect them together with dedicated layer two circuits um, between your resources that you've allocated at these sites. Um, there's lots of sites, terabit links, uh, um, 100 gig links. We, we control them at layer one, so we can give you layer two circuits. Um, often there'll be quality of service, bandwidth guaranteed, things like this. Um, and then the other thing that Casey mentioned that's really important here is that it's connected. All of this allows connections from within fabrics resources to outside. So you can see a bunch of um, cloud resources like Chameleon and Cloud Lab, as well as the, the uh, you know, the public clouds like Google and, you know, AWS and such, um, as well as it's connected to a bunch of other test beds, including Powder, Cosmos, and, and, and the different power test beds, and, and a lot of supercomputing centers. Um, and one thing that's not quite mentioned here is that we can connect to your campus. So if you have something in your campus, um, if you have Internet to Rail to us, these kinds of things, we can connect your resources and your instruments um, to all of this and, and, and expand um, what Fabric can do. And we'd like to do that. Um, so if, as far as P4 is concerned, we're gonna, what we're going to do is allow you to um, deploy P4 switches at any or all of these res resources and connect them um, with you, your definition of your topology that you would like to build. Um, so in this case, I have this picture. I just kind of randomly picked some of the sites um, and we're going to have, pretend that I have a slice that has um, these, I just, how many did I put here? Seven P4 switches that are strategic, strategic places across the US. Um, and at some places I'm going to have a link out into Chameleon where I might have a giant compute cluster or Cloud Lab where I have another one or Azure or AWS where I might have some more, more public cloud resources. And potentially in my institution or your institution and, and your collaborators' institutions as well. So um, think about this is really what you're going the power of fabric and what this is going to allow you to do is you're going to be able to do your P4 experiments as if you own the core of the internet. And you're going to be able to create your own um, ideas about what the next generation's internet should look like. And you'll be able to deploy them and test them um, in a scaled, you know, in a, an environment that allows you to scale your experiment to, you know, at least the U.S., probably the world, um, and, and, and get really high performance as well. So this is really what we're we're offering. Um, the the challenge for us, I guess, is to figure out how to allow you to have these P four resources, these places where we are you're sharing them amongst yourselves. Like you know, you're not going to get this P four switch at a strategic place forever. You're going to have to share it with everyone else, kind of like a batch scheduling kind of style or like a cloud resource, but it's a network resource. Um, and as such, we're going to have different types of resources at these sites. And you're going to ask for the different resources that you want for your experiment. Um, could be software switches, as Casey said, it could be Tofino switches, or we'll have some Xilinx um, FPGAs that can act as P4 switches. Um, so we'll go over those just a little bit. I mean, everyone knows that they, the, what everyone wants when they say P4 is they want the Tofino switches, but those aren't yet available on Fabric. Um, these, when we do have them, there will be dedicated Tofino switches sitting in these racks at all, at, I think maybe not all the sites, but most of the sites. Um, and you will be able to use these as if you own that, that, that switch. So you'll be able to insert your compiled P4 um, program onto the switch and you'll be able to connect to it and connect your controller to it and control the the, the Tofino switch as 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 you would if you owned it um, and you can have them you know several of them all across the United States um, currently the initial hardware the Tofino hardware is being acquired we're trying to buy them and find out who will sell them at the best rate and and then has them available right now for example um, this is a little complicated because there's licensing and NDAs and stuff involved with Tofino and Intel and um, trying to, to uh, share these proprietary um, resources uh, is a little tricky. So we're, we're still trying to work out the workflow that, that is going to be used. I imagine um, Jorge and, and the people designing these, these uh, uh, tutorials that you're going to do today are, have similar um, challenges that they're, they're seeing. Um, the, the next one, so, so one of the things about Tofino that is actually challenging as well is that um, you can't share the Tofino switch 
um, at the same time with multiple users. So um, if we have a switch and you want to use it, um, it's we have to give the whole thing to you for that moment. Um, and as a way to provide more P4 switches, more hardware P4 switches to users simultaneously, um, as well as to just reduce the cost. Um, um, and, and there's also some reasons why you might want to use an, FP, an FPGA based P4 over a Tofino one in the first place. But what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to have Xilinx FPGAs, um, which are currently also not yet available. But you can use these as a small count, port count um, P4 switch. Um, the Xilinx folks have some, some uh, extensions to their FPGA toolkit that allow P4 to be deployed on it in a fairly simple way. But it doesn't quite, it's not perfect for Fabric yet. Um, so we've been working with Miriam Lesser, who's an FPGA expert um, at Northeastern University. And um, she and her team are going to uh, help build a Fabric bit code for Xilinx that will provide the needs that our users are, are desiring. Um, if you have some special needs for this, let us know. Um, we can, there's still time to like get some changes in there. So if you, if you find, have some interesting FPGA Xilinx P4 needs, let us know. Um, yeah, and uh, so this will be available at some point, point in time. And uh, what is available now um, is it mostly as a, uh, an, an initial deployment of P4 so we can get it started, but it's also gonna end up being um, a great way to have educational um, resources for lots of users that can simultaneously use it and for just development of, of P4 programs that can be deployed on, on, on the fabric infrastructure it are the software P4 switches. So um, I think some of the classes that you're going to take later today and um, in the next sessions uh, are based on the BMV2 model. So this is, you can think of it a little bit like a software based P4 switch. Um, it's open source. There's, you know, you can go to GitHub and download all the, all the code for it. And uh, what we did to get P4 started on Fabric was we um, took um, the BMV2 switch and packaged it so that we can deploy it in a VM on Fabric and connect it to these, um, to the, 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 the NICs that are, that are connected to the wider uh, dedicated layer two circuits that you can provision. Um, so now you get a VM with PCI passed through to these hardware NICs that can get really high bandwidth um, and dedicated layer two circuits across wide area. And now you have your BMV2 switch that you can control and program and, and configure as a, any way you want. Um, we also have Jupyter notebooks that will help you deploy these in a very simple way. Hopefully it's simple. It will get better as, as, as we get better users and they get, we get more feedback from um, what the users actually want. We'll, we can improve that. Um, and also uh, interesting is that um, I've been, we've been working with uh, Intel and Tofino and Verifla in trying to get the um, Tofino native architecture to learn more about it because we're going to be deploying the hardware Tofino switches. And um, they have something that's very similar to the BMV2 model um, called Tofino native architecture, um, Tofino model. And uh, they, we can do something very similar with that. Although um, there's ND, Intel NDAs required for this. So, so unfortunately I can't give you the software to do this, um, but if you have access to it on your own, I can help you um, use the Tofino model in place of BMV2 on top of Fabric resources, but you have to get the software yourself. So it's an interesting twist here. Um, I think they're working on making it more available to widely available, but we'll get there. Um, so uh, as an initial example on what we we're to, to, to try to share this with our users and get people started, um, I first had to learn P4. So I, I, I went to the, you know, the P4 learning tutorials that many of you have probably seen. They're probably very similar to um, the tutorials you're going to take today, although I don't know what tutorials you're going to take today. Um, these are a great place to get started with P4. They have a lot of hands-on exercises, um, a GitHub repository with all the, with not only the software you need, but the exercises and an you know, incomplete version of a P4 code, and you're supposed to complete it and solve the, and solve the, the challenge. Um, as you can see here, um, this is a, just a screenshot of their GitHub repository. Um, they have a whole list of uh, exercises you can take. Um, the interesting thing is the way they do this is that they have a virtual machine that you can, that can use. And um, that virtual machine uses a combination of mini net and network namespaces and such to um, deploy a topology that most of these 
these uh, exercises use that looks like this topology here, which is three P4 switches in a triangle. Um, and each one of the switches has you know, a dedicated layer two circuit between it and the other two switches, as well as a link to a local um, node that is like the host that's connected to that switch. And what you do is you um, do the exercises. And this, the second one is maybe one of the more interesting ones, or the first interesting one. Um, and they walk you through in that case is uh, how to make a custom tunnel that'll go through these switches um, between you know this host number one and host number two. And it's pretty interesting because you log into the, you know, where the switches exist and their BMV2 model exists, and you can rewrite the P4 program and compile it and deploy it and then send packets through and you can see them make it to the other side or, or not, depending on if you did it right or not. Um, so this is this is their P4. Um, tutorials and they're, and they're, they're pretty solid. Um, one interesting thing is your, your next speaker is Vladimir. He, uh, um, there's a bunch of videos out of him actually teaching people how to do some of these tutorials, which is really good. And um, I've actually been taking some of the Intel classes on, on Tofino P4 and uh, he's teaching that and doing a great job as well. So um, I will we'll enjoy his next talk. Um, so go out and watch the YouTube videos and do these P4 Lang tutorials. Um, so what we did as an initial challenge here was to take the P4 Lang um, tutorials and just move them to Fabric. And the idea was to um, use the exact same tutorials as the P4 Lang tutorials, um, but replace what they have as, with, when they're using Mininet, replace it with actual real Fabric resources. Um, so we did this and we can make it work. We have a Jupyter notebook that uses our FabLib library. So um, the screenshot in the back here is a screenshot of um, a Jupyter notebook that, that I wrote that has, um, that will use our FabLib Python library to deploy a Fabric slice that has in it um, the BMV2 um, software switch, as well as the P4 Lang um, tutorial repository, just cloned straight from, from GitHub. And it'll set up this particular slice here, which is in, which is the exact same slice as we saw before in their, in their tutorial, where you're actually going to have three P4 switches anywhere you pick any three sites in Fabric that, that you want, you can put them there. Um, it'll stand up a B4 a BMV2 software switch and create dedicated circuits, layer two circuits between them in a triangle, and then you can create a second um, BM at each site that is the host and connected in to the switch as well. So now every switch has three ports on it and, and it's connected to um, a, one host, right? Um, yeah, so now what we have basically is um, individual BMV2 switches using any fabric site, and dedicated WAN L2 links between them that look exactly like the L2 Lang tutorials um, and a Jupyter notebook that will deploy them and this, when you log into Fabric's portal, you can launch a, a Jupyter Hub instance or Jupyter Lab instance for yourself that will include these tutorials um, for you to use. So this is what we have. Um, you can then, once you launch it, if you wanted to, this is kind of just to show our, our Fabric portal. Um, we have a Fabric portal that allow you to view your, your slice that's up. In this particular slice, um, I was planning on doing a live demo for you today, but um, as you can see in this thing and this screenshot of our portal from over the weekend, there's disruptive maintenance from two days ago until next week. So right now the, the, the whole test bed is down, so I can't really do a live tutorial but, or, or live demo, but I was going to do that. But it, here's a view of the slice that I ran on, on over the weekend. Um, it has the, the big gray boxes are, each one of them is a different site. And I think we have, it's kind of small, but it's Max, which is a University of Maryland called Mid-Atlantic Crossroads, um, TAC, which is the Texas Advanced Computing Center in Austin. And then down here is Utah, which is the University of Utah. And at each one of these sites, there is um, a white box, which is a node that, that, that has the BMV2 um, software switch in it. And then another white box, which is the host. And they're, they're on the same site and we're connected with a with a, um, a local network there in the gray box. And then they're also connected to each other with these wider um, network links that go across between um, Texas and Maryland and Utah in a triangle, right? So this is actually a live slice that I stood up the other day that, that, that demonstrates that. And um, 
what this looks like if we go back to our previous picture um, of, of the, the whole uh, model or the whole uh, infrastructure is we have, um, <clears throat> you have using our Jupyter Hub environment in the notebooks, you can use, you can just launch a slice that looks like this. And what this ends up being is, you know, I, just, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it's really, it's interesting that to, to see it from different levels, I guess, is a, you know, a P4 switch at the University of Utah, a P4 switch at the University of Maryland, another one at TAC in Austin. And they're connected with dedicated layer two circuits um, that you control and no, no, you're not sharing with, with anyone else. And they each have a local host that's also on that same rack. And on, on top of all of these, these, uh, uh, these nodes are, is the soft, both the BMV2 software as well as the, the P4Lang tutorial. Um, and this looks, this is a, the topology that the tutorials use. So you can do things like um, build your basic custom tunnel, but now instead of going between one half of your local VM to the other half of your local VM, it'll actually go from a host sitting at the University of Utah to the uh, to a, a, a BMV2 software switch also at the University of Utah across a dedicated link across the country to another um, switch that you're controlling with P4 at the University of Maryland and then to that that host there. And um, so this is pretty powerful um, and it's, it's a good way for people to start learning about P4 by using these really simple tutorials, um, as well as to learn about Fabric and how you're gonna embed P4 into your Fabric eventually. Um, it's worth noting a couple things here, like the, the, that the difference between this using the um, BMV2 software switches and um, the, the Xilinx and Tofino hardware is, is pretty small. Um, I mean, it's big in terms of like, how fast the hardware can go and like the difference between the Xilinx and Tofino is gonna to be pretty different um, in terms of how you code it. But, but in terms of deploying it on fabric, it's gonna be pretty straightforward difference or straightforward to just change to their Jupyter notebook and the, and the you know, use of the FabLab library to deploy different types of switches here, depending on what you wanna do. So, um, and also the Tofino models software switch is possible. So if you have that code, um, I can show you how to drop your version of that code into one of these switches. And you could actually have the Tofino, the, the Tofino version of the P4 model um, running over here and do, do the same tutorials, but, but with, with Tofino. Um, yeah, and then what's also interesting here is like you can do all of those tutorials that the P4 Lang have provided, the P4 Lang organization has provided on their um, on their tutorial repository on GitHub, and you you could in, in fact do even more advanced tutorials that um, like for example some of the ones I'm learning about um, by going through the Intel um, the Intel uh, Tofino P4 coursework or classes um, I could deploy them on on here um, and run them across the wide area of course and they'll be you know slower of course but that's that's the trade off for now. Um, in summary, so P4 experiments on Fabric. Um, what the goal is to put user control of P4 switches in the core of the network and connect them with dedicated layer two circuits. Um, hardware, P4, Tofino, and Xilinx are coming soon. Software, BMV2, and, and Tofino are both possible now. The BMV2 version is um, like fairly simple to deploy if you get an account and, and um, um, if you have an account and you can just run the, the, the Jupyter Notebook and it'll bring it all up. Um, and we have this whole set of Jupyter Notebooks that'll streamline it all. Um, the other thing that is not in here that, that is important to know, and I, and I mentioned it briefly before, is that um, one thing that's really interesting about this is not that you're just, I mean, it is interesting to have P4 switches just spread out all over the country, connected into your own internet, basically. But you can combine them with all of the the NVMe storage and the GPUs and the other accelerators we have at various places um, to, to actually control your P4 network in ways that you might not have thought you could. Like, like if you wanted to have, like a, my example of using 
the GPUs to do some AI to reason about um, how to change routes or something like that. And then also you could use the storage to maybe have a caching mechanism for some content distribution network or video streaming or what have you. Um, and you could maybe use AI to do that too, I don't know. So the, the idea is to combine this all together um, and use P4 to control the network. Um, and the other thing to, to, to keep in mind is that um, we, we do have quite a bit of power inside of Fabric, but um, the, the amount of like just compute power for the edge is it's not just limited, but like there's just better places to do it. And that's one of the reasons we think that it's um, pretty powerful to connect all these Fabric experiments to things like Chameleon and Cloud Lab and Amazon and you, your own, um, your, your campus or your collaborators campuses and things like that. So um, yeah, I hope that's a pretty good summary of what we got going on. I guess we have, if you, you know, have any more questions, we have some websites, we have some documentation. Um, I think probably, um, uh, although we're still in the phase where we have beta testers are, are on, the, on Fabric and we're not truly open to the public, I think some of the P4, um, like, I don't know that we have anyone doing really interesting P4 work as the beta tester. So if you have some interesting P4 project that you want to do, please contact us. And especially if you think it'll map to Fabric well, um, we might want to work with you to figure out what, um, what kind of capabilities we should provide, but also maybe to get you to, to, to try to start using things and, and beat on P, our P4 capabilities for a while and see, see what breaks first. <laughs> So yeah, I think that was, is that it, Casey? I think that's the last slide. Yeah, well, yep. that should be so, it. So I guess we have a few minutes. I guess, I don't know if you want to do questions or, or what. Thank you both. Thank you, Casey and Paul. Uh, there are a few questions. Some of them were already uh, answered here in the chat window, but I want to uh, bring the first one by Asael. He said, uh, are there plans to extend the network to other uh, national research and education networks? Um, the, uh, Alex already answered, thank you, Alex. But in general, let's say an uh, institution here uh, in the US want to extend, what are the requirements to extend to, to become a node? Become a node? Do you want, do you want me to answer, Casey? You... <laughs> uh, either way, so, so uh, yeah. earlier uh, we mentioned about the Hank uh, mm -hmm. So each uh, basic, uh, a hang is like a rack of servers. Um, for a U.S. campus, it's very straightforward. If, if you have some projects uh, with the resource, you want to um, uh, sort of grab, uh, purchase a, a hang node, uh, we, we can share the exact configurations. Um, right now, some of the locations can connect using Internet 2 uh, with uh, AL2S. Uh, it, it's very straightforward to connect into the, hang, uh, the, the fabric topology. Uh, but if you have even better than L2S connectivities, uh, for example, you are on the DOE side, uh, we may discuss uh, uh, better optical options to connect your fabric. Uh, for internationals, we all the current um, sites were only limited because of the IRNC funding. So we have to choose some sites to begin with. But the method is uh, pretty uh, flexible. So uh, most in most cases, there are already international network uh, collaborations uh, where NSF already have a funded uh, circuit, uh, an optical network connecting to that country. So in that case, uh, as long as we can identify the points where that international network connects into US, uh, we can work with the partner and then discuss what's the best way. For example, uh, I mentioned Brazil. Uh, so we are currently uh, connecting uh, through an existing international network into Brazil, uh, but Brazil at the same time are uh, looking, are planning for installing additional fabric nodes at, uh, at possibly different lo multiple locations. So if, if that happens, then we will just expand it pretty straightforwardly. I'd add to you that there's kind of two ways that you might want to connect to fabric one is if you to, to have your own fabric node your own hank that um and that's powerful especially if you have a campus where you might have um several different um, research groups or instruments or compute facilities or whatever you have at your campus 
Um, you have a Hank, and then you can connect all those things through one Hank. But if you have your own research group and just your lab, and, and um, you want to connect from your university to whatever the closest Hank is that already is, exists out there, that is also a possibility. And I suspect there'll probably be more of the latter. Um, but the, of course, we want the former because that's you know expands our footprint even more, right? Yeah. Right. Thank you. Uh, if you have any question, please feel free to write down here in the chat window or unmute yourself. I think the other questions were already answered. Um, okay, there are no other questions. So again, Casey and Paul, thank you very much for this talk. Sure, thank you. So we're, uh, we're almost 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, 